Hello everybody. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about soldering and brazing. First we'll uh, start by saying that the difference between soldering and brazing apparently is only about the difference in the melting point of the solder or braze material. So if the melting point is lower than 800 degrees Fahrenheit then it's soldering and if it's above 800 or 850 degrees, depending on who you talk to, it's called brazing. Uh, in each case, there's a material that's added to bond the pieces together that's different than the material that you're joining, okay? So, uh, and I, I know everybody seems to be able to solder electronic guitar parts and all of that stuff with no problem, and that's, that's soldering, and that's pretty strong stuff, but if we add silver to the solder, we get superior strength. And um, this is my, from my, my soldering and brazing drawer. But first, let me show you what I found this morning at, at Ace Hardware in my town. These are two lead-free solders. And it's important, I think, to always use um, material that is cadmium free and lead free. Those are bad things. You don't want them near you and there's no reason to use them anymore because we have better ways of doing it. Now this this one is 98% tin and 2% silver and this is normally called silver bearing solder. And you see it comes with a tube of flux. Okay and then this is a brazing material because its melting point is 1,205 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so this is brazing, not soldering. And lo and behold, it even says so on the flux. They can keep it together. Silver braze flux with this, with this silver. And this is very high, 56% silver. And this package, this little package, cost $37 and this cost 10. So that's the difference of the cost of silver mostly. All right, well, we'll try this out, but first let's uh let's go over what I found in my soldering drawer. Here's some um, so-called easy solder. So there's easy, medium and and hard, I believe it is. This is the jewelry end of things and it it's not really my expertise, but this is flat solder. It says solder, but I think this is a brazing material. Well, it doesn't say here what the melting point is, but I think it's above 800, so it would be braze. This is brazing alloy, 45% silver. And um, you can see a small diameter wire uh, that you get from a welding supply place. Then other forms are um, here's a, you know, this kind of looks like electrical solder, the way electrical solder is packaged. This is good stuff, made by Harris, it's called Stay Bright. And this is used a lot in HVAC, in other words, if you're repairing a uh, air conditioner or something like that. And this one, I looked it up and it's 4% silver. So this would probably be stronger than the ACE hardware stuff we were just looking at at 2%. These solders, these low temperature solders, um, use a different flux. So um, this is the Stay Clean flux that, uh, again, it's a Harris brand product, easy to find. Good stuff, this is the liquid. And then they also make a paste. I guess this one I haven't opened yet, but oh, there it is. So, well, it's a plastic film over. Take, take my word for it, it's paste, and it dries out, which is why I'm not anxious to open it. <laughs> I already have a couple that are open. This is how I got started with this stuff. You can see that it's got some age on it. This is called MG, Miriam Graves 120A, and this, was a, this has a flux in it. This melts at... 430 Fahrenheit, and they're calling out 15,000 
PSI tensile strength, which is pretty darn good. And that's the benefit of using the solder. So that's what's better than using just regular plumbing solder or electrical solder. And then finally, you can buy solder all ground up into a powder and then mixed with paste. So this is copper for plumbing pipes. This is a silver bearing solder paste, which doesn't tell us how much silver is in it. This is copper, again, like that. And this one says that it works for aluminum and pot metal. You're welcome to try your hand at that. I've never found that it was really very satisfying. But having said all of that introductory stuff, I will say that the silver bearing solder is terrific stuff and it's very, very, very useful around the shop for a variety of chores, sticking things together. So here, let's look at this. So if we were to just snip this off, right, and we wanted to solder this to, to this plate, we'll just get this clean with some Scotch-Brite. Okay. And, uh, and we'll use, we'll use this, the flux they gave us, see how that works. Liquid flux. All right. We'll heat this from underneath so we don't push the flux away. Let's see how this works. All right, so that's, that's pretty convenient. I think you'll agree. Oh, I should tell you that this is map gas, which I just found out is no longer available. It's a combination of propane and some other gases, and it burns hotter than propane, quite a bit hotter. Um, and you can still get something like this uh, although I wasn't able to find it in my hardware store this morning, but it's called premium propane now instead of MAPP. It's kind of too bad. I've been able to buy this for many years and it's good stuff, but I guess the uh, whatever it is they replaced it with is is also working well. And then just to point out, I won't show you a cast iron frying pan. I should have, but <laughs> Sometimes a, a small thing like this, if you didn't have a torch like that, you'd be able to, on your stove, just put this assembly in the frying pan, heat it up until the solder flowed, and then turn the flame off, and, and you'd be all done with that. So, uh, this is, um, you know, strong stuff, and um, pretty dependable. For most of the things around the shop, that would be plenty of, plenty of strength. Let me show you a few of the ways that I've used it here in my work. These are little hold downs for my, my pick guard when I hold it in the milling machine. And you can see I've raised this little standoff uh, into a shallow groove I cut in this piece. And it's just a, it was just seemed like a quick way to do it to me. K 
came out fine. Here is an old Stanley box scraper that has a new bottom that was brazed on here. And you can see what a nice job that made. There's a little bit of solder you can see here. But really, really a nice job. You can see that it came out without a mess. Nicely done. Okay. So this was done because we needed a little extra thickness in order to get the right curve on this tool. And here's two other examples of a small tool that um, put an extra piece on, recut the slot for the blade so that I could get a nice small throat opening. And this is something that we'll demonstrate very soon here. Um, but just going on to other examples, there's a cast iron spoke shave with a piece of brass soldered in there. Again, to close up the otherwise gigantic throat opening that, that was in this tool. And as we know, the throat opening is an important feature, important dimension on a cutting tool like a plane or a spoke shave. Um, this is a, sh a shop made plane that I designed and made. A little bit of a long story, but I'm showing it to you here because uh, I brazed these two pieces of stainless tubing to the brass body of the plane uh, in order to accept the handle. And I, I made a couple of different handles that, that go on these two posts. So that's, that's a nice way to, to hold this on. In other words, you don't have to drill holes and thread things and put in screws and whatnot. The solder or brazing material does a, a quick job of holding things together. You know, looks, looks pretty good as well, if you do it right. And then um, here's an example of brazing. The uh, silver bearing solder wouldn't be strong enough to hold this carbide insert onto this tool for the, the purpose that we applied it to. And this, <laughs> this tool uh, appears in a, our early movie uh, where we, we create a um, spherical concave surface on the lathe. But anyway, that's a solid carbide um, insert cutter that we brazed onto this chunk of stainless to take that cut. And let's see, last but not least is a tailpiece. This is a tailpiece that I made for my work, and it's made of mokumegane, which is a decorative Japanese technique. And the way you exploit it is to machine or carve the surface of the metal. And the metal is made up of many layers. And then when you uh, forge the metal flat so as to remove the, the cuts that you've made in it, those uh, layers present on the surface and make these interesting patterns. And you can create whatever pattern you want if you can anticipate how things will work as you manipulate that stack of material. Anyway, there's two pieces here. This is one piece and another, and they're, they're joined with the low temperature silver bearing solder in these two joints here and here. Often, when you're doing these soldering jobs or brazing jobs, one of the big problems is keeping things from sliding around. Of course, you saw me use my pocket knife to keep this, this tube from falling off the work when we were soldering it just a minute ago. And that's, that worked. But sometimes you can use a thing like this to clamp 
Now this is something that, that uh, I came up with years ago when I was trying to clamp things that were not cooperating. And it's just a way of getting a pretty big weight to bear somewhere without, without using a clamp. And uh, sometimes it's just really what you want to hold things together in position so that they'll hold still while you're applying the solder and the heat. And things get slippery. So uh, I encourage you, if you're interested in this stuff, to look up jewelry makers, and they know a lot more about this than I do. There's all kinds of um, tricks with this. One really good trick is to take a piece of solder and, and crush it in a strong vise. And, or you can, dry, you can uh, hit it with a hammer too. But the nice thing about this is that now you have a you know, thin piece of solder that you can snip up and put it right where you want it. So sometimes it's, it's more fun and it'll stay, stay in place better than a round wire. So that's, that's one thing you can do. All kinds of soldering tricks. Again, I'll let you, I'll let you look into the, the jewelry geniuses on YouTube and see what you can find out. Nice to have a brick around, any old brick, or you can buy fire brick if you can find some. If you know a potter that's got a, a kiln, they probably have a broken piece of fire brick to give you. Anyhow, that ought to get you going. And uh, we're going to apply it uh, in our next uh, tool making video and show how this throat can be um, usefully narrowed so that the tool works properly and uh, you can get a better cut. Thanks.